Welcome to Break Magazine, my name is El Pavey and this is Mini Tip Monday. The Dakar Rally has just started and I thought that would be the perfect time to make some Dakar inspired Mini Tip Mondays. And so our first Mini Tip Monday of 2020, we're going to go through the basics of towing. Towing a bike in Dakar is something that I think pretty much anyone that goes to Dakar ends up doing at some point. I've got a lot of experience of doing it. And these are my two favorite methods for getting the job done. Method one is the classic, well-loved foot peg to foot peg approach. There's some really nice things about going foot peg to foot peg, primarily that it's a nice, stable, easy, low down way to tow a bike. It keeps the bikes from moving around too much and it works really, really well for the majority of towing situations. The only downside is that the limit comes when the terrain is a bit more technical and you need to be able to move both bikes around a little bit more. When you're cornering, when you tow foot peg to foot peg, you can't cross the rope in front of the front wheel of the rear bike. If you do that, it kind of gets a little bit messy and it becomes really easy to tuck the front wheel or snap the rope. When it comes to getting the towing done, first you need a tow rope. Then we're gonna start with choosing a foot peg or a low down point on the towing bike. And you're gonna to go to the opposite side on the bike to be towed. So if we start with a left hand foot peg, we then tow with the right hand foot peg on the broken bike. When it comes to attaching the two bikes together, you never wanna tie both bikes to the rope. You want the bike being towed to have some kind of release mechanism. So we're gonna wrap the tow rope around the foot peg once only. If you wrap it too many times around the foot peg, even when you let go of it with the pressure of your foot, there'll be too much friction between the foot peg and the tow rope and the release mechanism that we've put in by only wrapping it once or twice becomes void and you get stuck to two bikes. So remember, only wrap it once. When you go foot peg to foot peg, it's really important, especially when you're cornering, that you stay in a staggered formation. So you stay with the rope never crossing the front or the back wheels. It's the limitation of this method of towing and it's really important that you keep that in mind when you're riding. Next up on our list is that the person doing the driving has to be mindful of their line and really, really smooth on the controls. Pull away really gently, keep the gear changes nice and soft. And the last tip when it comes to towing in that method is that the person at the back, the person being towed, is the brakes. Where the driving bike is doing all the accelerating, the bike at the back is the one that controls the deceleration. The goal is to always try to keep as much tension in the tow rope as possible. If you let the tow rope go slack, when it goes tight again, it's got the potential to snap or to unbalance one of the two bikes and make the whole riding experience a little bit uncomfortable. Keep that tow rope tight, do your braking with the back bike. Method two for towing is to go from a high point to another high point on the bike. So we generally would do this from a rear rack or an exhaust mount, somewhere that allows the rope to have a lot more freedom. And the reason we do this one is when the terrain gets a little bit more technical, it's much, much easier to choose your lines because you're not limited by the tow rope crossing the wheels. The downside of this method is you have a lot more leverage over the front bike. So the back bike can move a long way left and a long way right, and it puts a lot of force and it can make tight turns pretty tricky. But if you've got technical terrain and the riding's pretty straight, you're in ruts or rocks or whatever, this is definitely a really, really good way to do it. When it comes to tying the two bikes together, we generally go from somewhere where we've got clearance of the rear number plate and the rear wheel. And then you need to figure out a way to get the tow rope to go between the handlebar clamps. This gives you a nice straight pull on the handlebars on the bike being towed. And it means you've got lots and lots of control over your direction. On a dirt bike like we've got here, this is super easy because there's nothing in the way. But on an adventure bike, you might need to fiddle it through the screen or find a way around that problem. Lastly, you want one wrap around the left-hand grip so that you can release. That's your release mechanism. And the reason this works a little bit better in difficult terrain than the foot peg is it's a tiny bit easier to let go of the rope with your hand than it is with your foot. It's not gonna get stuck on the foot peg. If you make sure it's only one wrap, it'll always come apart. Now, when it comes to the actual towing, 95% of the rules are the same. Keep it smooth, the rear bike does all the braking, the front bike does all the accelerating, but the freedom that you've got is that you can move around and choose whatever line you want. You can be completely behind each other, you can take completely different lines if you need to, but you have got to keep in mind when the corners get tight, that the bike at the back ideally needs to run a little bit wider than it normally would so it doesn't pull over the lead bike. And otherwise, that's all there is to know. Hope you enjoyed this mini tip Monday. Thanks for watching. If you like it, hit like, 
throw a comment down below and suggest some more tips you want us to give you. We also recently got some t-shirts printed. You can find a link to those in the description below. And otherwise, remember, life's better when you're riding. Thank you.